The last prop that will be used in their greatest show on earth is the world's largest hadron collider, which is located in Geneva. CERN stands for European Centre for Nuclear Research. This gigantic machine has been the talk of numerous conspiracy theories. If you have ever wondered what this massive piece of machinery really is, along with its purpose, buckle up and hang on. The truth is indeed stranger than fiction. Top scientists, engineers and physicists from all over the world, have joined together, dating back to the 1950s. Their goal was to make the world's largest and complex instrument. They achieved their goal. They also exceeded their purpose far more than they could ever anticipate. What they created, was the very tool needed to break on through to the other side. The Massive Hadron Collider has opened up multiple dimensions. Most of us know, that this machine is not good. There are quite a lot of theories out there about what CERN really is. Some claim that they have found the God Particle, and even Dark Matter. Others state that CERN is the reason for the Mandela Effect. I personally find the Mandela Effect intriguing yet confusing. So, what is the Mandela Effect? This is a recent psychological phenomenon, of shared memories, that do not line up or match. Here let me explain, two people could be watching the same public event. Yet when asked what they saw, each person would give two entirely, and completely, different facts of that same event. So same event with two totally different views, is another way to explain this phenomenon. Some base the Mandela effect, on alternate reality, or a glitch in the matrix, due to the being an alternative dimension or multi-universe. Here are a few examples. My mom always said that life, is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. My mom always said, life was like a box of chocolates. What is it here? You never know what you're going to get. Do you remember, Choosy Mother's Choose? Think about it. Do you remember? Here is the 1977 commercial. You're sure choosing making soup from scratch. And you serve that peanut butter? It's a leading brand and they're all alike. Wrong. New Jif's better. What's new about Jif? Well, New Jif's the fine grind peanut butter. Fine grind? Jif's peanuts are ground even finer to get out all the flavorful goodness. Smell yours. So? Now Jif. Smells more like fresh peanuts. Taste Jif. Tastes, tastes better, really better. Choosy mothers choose new Jif. Now it's fine grind. I remember it as Jif. Choosy mothers choose Jif. Yet some remember the saying as Jiffy. Choosy mothers choose Jiffy. Does that sound right? So what is it, Jif or Jiffy? Here are some more examples. Fruit Loops. Captain Crunch. Oscar Mayer. Bernstein Bears. Looney Dunes. Just to name a few as there are many many more. This no doubt, it is a strange phenomenon. Some believe, that CERN did something to our world, our dimension, and thus created an alternative reality. Honestly, I really do not know all the whys, the hows or even the ifs. However, what I do know and am thus reminded, 
now nothing will be restrained from them, which they may have imagined to do. Genesis chapter 11 verse 6. Ponder that, beloved dead, ones. Nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Wow! I personally feel this is some sort of witchcraft. Which somehow CERN, is behind this. They created something, so powerful, that could it have really changed people's perspective? Their reality? Something we need to consider for real. This is your this last is your chance. chance. After this, After there, is there is no there turning, is turning, 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 turning. You take the blue pill. The, pill, the, pill, the story, the story ends. ends. You wake up in you your up, bed and believe bed, whatever you whatever want. want. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show, I show you, how you how deep the rabbit hole goes. goes. Remember, remember, remember. All I'm offering is the truth. Nothing, nothing. I believe CERN, the Hadron Collider, is the only machine, that can literally, break through to the other side. What is, that other side? The spiritual realm. CERN was created, for one single purpose, to open, the spiritual realm. Why would anyone, want to split our dimension? That is, literally, tear our physical world apart? The answer is quite simple really. To bring demons straight into our realm. Once broken through, the demons can be fully manifested, in the physical world. See our physical world, what we see, is three dimensional. Yet there is another dimension, the spiritual realm. Breaking through to the other side. Demons can now be fully manifested into the physical world. And that is absolutely what is needed, to pull of the greatest show on earth. Most of us, would not dare tap into the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm is very real. Yet is quite scary to humans. Here let me explain, as of now, those who are looking for the hidden knowledge, that is the occult, must channel in, or open a doorway, to gain access, into the other realm. Some ways people do this, is by inviting the spirits, or seeking mediums, psychics, or palm readers. Other ways, are by reading horoscopes, and believing in them, so much so, that the person accepts that spirit of manipulation. Once accepted, that spirit will begin to manipulate, the events in that person's life. Mediating, in hopes of achieving a higher consciousness, Yoga is another form. A lot of new age teachings, especially those that teach, someone how to open one's third eye, which is the pineal gland. The pineal gland in and of itself is not bad. But opening up that third eye, to new age concepts, is a mass weapon, of eternal destruction. Other ways, are by casting certain spells listening to trance music, repetition, and blanking the mind out. Then there are also mind-altering drugs, that have literally, opened people up to pure demonic possession. For years, people have experimented with LSD, which is a psychedelic drug. These drugs alter one's consciousness, and opens a doorway straight to the occult. Think I'm wrong on this? Then check out the following video. Be warned this is very disturbing. I found it so disturbing, that I could not watch the entire video. These are people are Flacca. Pure demonic possession. A killer drug known as Flacca is spreading rapidly across the United States and already causing an epidemic of overdose fatalities and acts of violence. Talk about Flacca. Flacca. The drug is called Flacca. Some have dubbed it the insanity drug. And it's everywhere. It's been described as the scariest drug in the world. More powerful than heroin or cocaine. This is a synthetic drug that can alter your state of mind, raising excited delirium, body temperature, and literally losing their mind. <laughs> They're all experiencing like superhuman kind of strengths. Or it takes six policemen to hold them down. That's a problem. 
psychotic breakdowns, hallucinations, aggressive, violent behavior, cannibalism and self-mutilation, indiscriminate violence, when Flocka takes over. We are living in the context of the end of the age. We are a nation under judgment. But you think it's bad, wait until you see what really bad is. Driving and there's a guy that jumped on our hood of our car. <laughs> 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 Illinois, Ohio, Texas, Kentucky, California, and Florida, especially hard. Florida, a key role in opening portals and contacting the spirit world. What was going on in your body, in your mind? What was happening to you? I never experienced anything like that before. I felt that I was possessed, and I couldn't try to stop whatever was in me. You described this as, you said, was it like hell on the inside, or the devil? How did you describe it? It felt so evil. It felt like the most darkest, evilest thing that is imaginable. Many of them will see dead bodies that are there, whether it be animals or humans. They can actually feel the body. They can see the body. Others are... Uh, like nothing I could ever even think of, or nothing I've seen in the movies. It felt very demonic, very evil. Uh, the consumption of substances with psychotropic properties are becoming increasingly significant. The impact is already happening in society with the number of people who are succumbing to uh, the spiritual impacts of drug consumption and, and other kind of occult activity and as well as the increase of psychotic and, uh, and violence that's occurring. I think that we're going to see waves of this that are going... Drugs clearly open the mind for pure demonic possession. But Jim Morrison was one of many that used drugs to open up a door. He literally did break through to the other side, through music and drugs. Compare him rolling on the ground, to the boy, who was rolling on the ground. Same spirit indeed. Hell is not even here yet, folks. If you are not right, with Yahuwah, time to get right. If you don't know his son, Yahushua, he has been patiently waiting for. You. It is never too late, my dear friend. Now is the time. Something, far worse than what you just watched, is coming. Darkness, is on the horizon and, pure evil, is about to be, unleashed upon the world. Not everyone, is opening the doors, intentionally. Some open doors unintentionally. Such by unrepentant sin. Not forgiving others. Having sexual sins. And for the most part, being disobedient to Yahuwah. These are just some ways. CERN on the other hand, can break the barrier veil, that separates, the seen from the unseen. The spiritual realm, is multidimensional. This means, there are not multiple universes, or even worlds. Rather there is just one world, with a spiritual realm, that is multidimensional, while the physical realm is three-dimensional. The spiritual realm, is alongside the physical. Not only concern open interdimensional portals, but I believe their goal, is to turn the sky, into one big portal. The purpose, is to use this super technology, to deceive, the entire world, into believing, the strong delusion, that is deceiving the entire world, that Yahushua, the Messiah, has returned. But their goal, is to break through, into the spiritual realm. Thus, creating a loophole, for Satan and the fallen messengers, to pull off, the greatest show on earth. See, before the fall of man, there was only, the one realm. A dimension that consisted of the spiritual, and the physical, in which all was together. That is why Adam and Hawa was able to hear, and talk to Yahuwah. They were even able to talk and see the serpent. And the serpent, was more crafty, than any beast of the field which Yahuwah Elohim had made. And he said to the woman, Is it true that Elohim has said, Do not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We are to eat of the fruit of the trees, of the garden, but of the fruit, of the tree, which is in the midst, 
of the garden, Elohim has said, Do not eat of it, nor touch it, lest you die. And the serpent, said to the woman, You shall certainly not die. For Elohim, knows, that in the day you eat of it, your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be like Elohim, knowing good and evil. Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 through 5 Then, the eyes of both, of them were opened, and they knew, that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together, and made loin coverings for themselves. And they heard the sound of Yahuwah, Elohim walking, about in the garden, in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves, from the presence of Yahuwah, Elohim, among the trees, of the garden. And Yahuwah, Elohim called unto Adam, and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard your voice, in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, so I hid myself. And he said, Who made you know that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree, of which I commanded, you that you should not eat? Genesis chapter 3 verse 7 through 11 See, after the fall of man, Yahuwah, put up a veil, blocking us from seeing, into the spiritual dimension. When they sinned, he made them clothes. He also put them out of the garden. And Yahuwah, Elohim made coats of skin, for the man and his wife, and dressed them. Genesis chapter 3 verse 21 So Yahuwah, Elohim sent him out, of the garden of Eden, to till the ground, from which he was taken, and he drove the man out. And he placed Kerubim, at the east, of the garden of Eden, and a flaming sword, which turned every way, to guard, the way to the tree of life. Genesis chapter 3 verse 23 through 24 When Adam and Hawa sinned, the veil, that is the covering, was put up. Thus causing, humanity to only be able to see the physical realm, in our three-dimensional reality. In Yahuwah's great mercy, he had the cherubim guard the east of Eden, so that no one could, get to the tree of life. The cherubim, had to be there. Clearly, we now know, that it is possible for people, to break through that veil, that is the covering. Thus, seeing into the spiritual realm. Since, Yahuwah, had the cherubim stand guard, I wonder, if he did this, because if someone was to find the tree of life, in the spiritual realm, they could live forever, in the physical realm. We do know that mankind, is still looking for that fountain of youth. We also know that Dracula, along with the other demonic movies, have people living forever. We also know that the very first lie was, you shall not surely die. Without a doubt, serious matters to ponder on. We might not fully understand, if that was indeed the case. However, we do know that in man's sinful state, living forever, in this realm would be terrible. Seriously, could you imagine if Hitler never died? Or Joseph Stalin? Heinrich Himmler? Saddam Hussein? Or what about Nero? Caligula a Roman Emperor? Or the real Lee Fe Dracula, Vlad the Impaler? Or Elizabeth Bathory, the Countess Dracula? If someone, as evil as one of them, were able to find the tree of life, think of the devastation, and horrific history, humanity could have had. Let us praise Yahuwah. For he is good. He has always had humanity's best interest first, since he is our Abba. That is our Father. Yahuwah, only created the one universe as outlined in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, and Isaiah chapter 45 verse 18. This universe consists, of the earth, along with the three heavens, which consist of the sky which we see, and outer space, and finally where Yahuwah is. I do not believe, in parallel universes, or even multi-universes. These to me, suggest more than one universe. However, with that said, I do believe that Yahuwah has blocked humanity, from being able to see, into the spiritual realm. In his great mercy, he has done this for our own good. To protect us, from the unseen. He also did this, because we have free will choice. 
to believe in him or not. If he allowed us, to be able, to see the unseen that is where he is, along with the host of heaven, then all of humanity, would believe, from seeing, and not from faith in Yahushua. See, he wants us to freely choose faith in him. And belief, is the substance, of what is expected, the proof of what is not seen. For by this, the elders obtained witness. By belief, we understand that the ages, were prepared, by the word of Elohim, so that what is seen was not made of what is visible. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 through 3 This same message, is what Yahushua was stating, when he told Thomas, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. John chapter 20 verse 29 When Yahuwah, dictates in the spiritual realm, such as, let there be light, and just like that, there was light. Everything he says is manifested, into our physical realm. Yahuwah, has the authority, over everything that occurs. That is why Yahushua, told the pilot, that he has no power over him, unless it came from above as outlined in John chapter 19 verse 11. Reading the entire creation story, is just one of many times, the scriptures state this. Because in him were created all, that are in the heavens, and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or rulerships, or principalities, or authorities, all have been created through him, and for him. And he is before all, and in him all hold together. Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 through 17. Yahuwah created time for us, and we are stuck here in time. Whereas, in the spiritual realm, there is no set time. That is why, scriptural prophecies, are for sure going to occur. Nothing is going to stop prophecy, because these events have already occurred, in the spiritual realm, which is unseen and not restricted by time. When the appointed time comes, the prophecies, will occur here in the physical, that is the visible world. Let us not forget that the prophet Daniel, was told to seal the book, until the time of the end. But you, Daniel, hide the words, and seal the book, until the time, of the end. Many shall diligently search, and knowledge shall increase. Daniel chapter 12 verse 4. And he said, Go Daniel, for the words are hidden, and sealed till the time of the end. Daniel chapter 12 verse 9. To further explain, Turn with me to the great book of kings. Get ready to be astonished. And this greatly troubled, the heart of the sovereign, of Aram. And he called his servants, and said to them, S declare to me, who of us, is for the sovereign of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my master, O sovereign, for Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, declares to the sovereign of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. And he said, Go and see where he is, so that I send and get him. And it was reported to him, saying, See, he is in Dothan. And he sent horses, and chariots, and a great army there, and they came by night and surrounded the city. And the servant of the man of Elohim, rose early and went out, and saw an army, surrounding the city, with horses, and chariots. And his servant said to him, Oh, my master! What do we do? And he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us, are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, and said, Yahuwah, I pray, open his eyes, and let him see. And Yahuwah, opened the eyes, of the young man, and he looked, and saw the mountain covered with horses, and chariots of fire, all around Elisha. 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 11 through 17 Elisha's servant, physically saw the city being surrounded by the Arameans. However, he could not see, into the spiritual realm. Yahuwah's, army surrounded the Arameans, and it was not until. After, Elisha prayed to Yahuwah, for his eyes to be opened. That he beheld Yahuwah's army. In that very moment. That instant. The veil the covering, was removed. His servant, saw into both the spiritual, and the physical world, at the same time. Oh hallelujah! Praise Yahuwah! Rejoice with me!
Not only is this totally fascinating, but this is quite amazing, don't you think? Seriously, this brings a new meaning to the term matrix which is defined as something that constitutes the place or point from which something else originates, takes form, or develops. See, events always start in the spiritual realm, then manifest into the physical, which is our realm, our reality and our dimension. To further explain this, remember when the prophet Daniel fasted for 21 days? As soon as he prayed, do you remember how a messenger was coming to give him the answer? Something major occurred that hindered the messenger getting to Daniel. Do you remember what happens? If not let us review this remarkable event. In those days I, Daniel, was mourning three weeks of days. I did not eat desirable food, and meat and wine did not come into my mouth. And I did not anoint myself at all, till the completion of three weeks of days. And on the twenty-fourth day of the first month, while I was by the side of the great river, that is Hittical, then I lifted my eyes, and looked, and saw a certain man dressed in linen, whose loins were girded with gold of Ephaz. And his body was like beryl, and his face like the appearance of lightning, and his eyes like torches of fire, and his arms, and feet like polished bronze in appearance, and the sound of his words, like the sound of a crowd. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men who were with me, did not see the vision, but a great trembling fell upon them, and they ran away to hide themselves. So, I was left alone, when I saw this great vision, and no strength remained in me, for my comeliness was destroyed in me and I retain no strength. But I heard the sound of his words. And while I heard, the sound of his words. I was stunned lying with my face to the ground. And see, a hand touched me, and set me trembling on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O oh Daniel, man greatly appreciated, understand the words that I speak to you, and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. And while he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. And he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand, and to humble yourself, before your Elohim, your words were heard, and I have come, because of your words. But the head of the rule of Persia withstood me twenty-one days. And see, Mikhail, one of the chief heads, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the sovereigns of Persia. And I have come to make you understand what is to befall your people in the latter days. For the vision is yet for days to come. Daniel chapter 10 verse 2 through 14. Pay special attention that Daniel is the only one who saw the vision. The reason is because he was able to see into the spiritual realm. Now as soon as he prayed, Daniel's words were heard right in the spiritual realm. The messenger went forth to show Daniel, but the ruler of Persia tried to stop the messenger. A battle took place. A real battle in the spiritual realm. That battle lasted for 21 days. Yahuwah did not allow that battle to be seen in the physical realm. I believe seeing into the spiritual realm could be a scary thing for humanity. However, Yahuwah did remove the veil, for Daniel to see the messenger. Wow! Totally amazing, huh? There is more though, much more. Come on, let me show you some. Yahuwah, also removed the veil, the covering for Jacob, to see the heavenly messengers, descending and ascending back and forth to heaven. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he came upon a place and stopped over for the night, for the sun had set. And he took one of the stones, of that place and put it at his head, and he laid, down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed and saw a ladder set up on the earth, and its top reached to the heavens, and saw messengers of Elohim, going up and coming down on it. And see, Yahuwah stood above it and said, I am Yahuwah, Elohim of Abraham, your father and the Elohim of Isaac. The land on which you are lying, I give it to you and your seed. And your seed, shall be as the dust of the earth, and you shall break forth to the west, and to the east, to the north, 
and the south. And all the clans, of the earth, shall be blessed, in you and in your seed. And see, I am with you, and shall guard you wherever you go, and shall bring you back to this land. For I am not going to leave you, until I have done, what I have spoken to you. And Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Truly, Yahuwah, is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of Elohim, and this is the gate of the heavens. Genesis chapter 28 verse 10 through 17 Even though he had fallen asleep, Yahuwah, allowed Jacob to see the Kodesh messengers, going back to heaven, and coming down to earth. This is absolutely fascinating. This information was just not for Yaakob but Yahuwah, also wanted us to know. For thousands of years, he has kept his word preserved, for us. Yaakob's ladder reveals, that even though we cannot see Yahuwah's, Kodesh messengers, they really do exist. They are always busy, doing Yahuwah's work. This reinforces, that the spirit world, is right here with us, we just cannot see. Another example, where Yahuwah removed the veil, the covering, is when the prophet Yasha Yahu, seen Yahuwah on the throne. In the year that sovereign Atsi Yahu died, I saw Yahuwah, sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the heckle. Above it stood Seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. Yasha Yahu chapter 6 verse 1 through 2. Another example, I would like to share, is the story of Balaam, or his donkey and the messenger. And Elohim came to Balaam, at night and said to him, If the men come to call, you, rise and go with them, but only the word which I speak to you that you do. And Balaam, rose in the morning, and saddled his donkey and went with the heads of Moab. But the displeasure of Elohim, burned because he went, and the messenger of Yahuwah, stationed himself, in the way as an adversary against him. And he was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. And the donkey saw the messenger of Yahuwah, standing in the way, with his drawn sword in his hand, and the donkey, turned aside out of the way, and went into the field. So Bilam, beat the donkey, to turn her back onto the way. Then the messenger of Yahuwah, stood in a narrow passage, between the vineyards, with a wall, on this side, and a wall on that side. And when the donkey saw the messenger of Yahuwah, she pushed herself, against the wall and crushed Bilam's foot against the wall, so he beat her again. And the messenger of Yahuwah went further and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn aside, right or left. And when the donkey saw the messenger of Yahuwah, she lay down under Bilam. So Bilam's displeasure burned, and he beat the donkey with his staff. Then Yahuwah opened the mouth of the donkey, and she said to Bilam, What have I done to you, that you have beaten me these three times? And Bilam said to the donkey, because you have mocked me. I wish there were a sword in my hand, for I would have killed you by now. And the donkey said to Bilam, Am I not your donkey on which you have ridden, ever since I became yours, to this day? Was I ever known to do so to you? And he said, No. Then Yahuwah opened Bilam's eyes, and he saw the messenger of Yahuwah, standing in the way, with his drawn sword in his hand. And he bowed his head and fell on his face. And the messenger of Yahuwah, said to him, Why have you beaten your donkey these three times? See, I have come out to stand against you, because your way is reckless before me. And the donkey saw me, and turned aside from me these three times. If she had not turned aside from me, I certainly would have killed you by now, and let her live. And Bilam said to the messenger of Yahuwah I have sinned, for I did not know you stood in the way against me. And now, if evil is in your eyes, let me turn back. 
Numbers chapter 22 verse 20 through 35. Praise Yahuwah. Another fascinating example of how spiritual realm is right here, we just cannot see it. Most people today, would think Bilam was on some serious drugs. Like he is having a super bad trip. However, the truth is, everyone has heard that animals have a sixth sense. They have been known to act strange before natural disasters strike. Pets know when someone is sick. They know if someone is about to have a seizure. About to pass out. Animals can also see spirits just as Bilam's donkey did. Here is an example of a video that shows dogs seeing something that their owners are not able to see. And he couldn't see. Something really weird is happening. See? She wants to eat. Her food bowl is in there. She's too paranoid to go in there. <laughs> in the video, Lola can be seen approaching the doorway of the kitchen several times, but afraid to enter. Kenny is amused by the whole incident and even goes over to film inside the kitchen to show that there is absolutely nothing strange inside. And then when I go in the kitchen, there's nothing there. So, what's the matter with the dog? At one point, the dog just seems to give up on her dinner, unwilling to face whatever is in the kitchen. She simply lays in her bed. You hungry? Is that ghost in this house freaking you out? See, what are you looking at? You're afraid to look over there. That's weird. Eventually, Lola builds up the nerve to quickly grab a bite of her food. But she then backs out as if frightened by something approaching her. Eventually, Kenny concludes that the dog is just weird. <laughs> oh, we had the weirdest dog in the world. Keeping in mind that dogs can see ultraviolet light well beyond human vision, you have to watch. This is just one of many examples of dogs seeing something that the owners cannot see. Again, brothers and sisters. The spiritual realm is here. Yet in Yahuwah's great mercy he has blocked us from being able to see into that realm. Another amazing example I want to review is when Ahab and Yahushaphat were planning to go to war against the Syrians. Do you remember what happens? Well Yahuwah removed the veil, the covering for Mika Yahu to see into the spiritual realm. Here is the story. Then he said. Therefore hear the word of Yahuwah. I saw Yahuwah sitting on his throne. And all the host of the heavens standing by him, on his right and on his left. And Yahuwah said, Who shall entice Ahab to go up, and fall at Ramoth? Gilead? And this one said this, and another said that. And a spirit came forward and stood before Yahuwah, and said, Let me entice him. And Yahuwah said to him, In what way? And he said, I shall go out and be a spirit of falsehood, in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Entice him, and also prevail. Go out and do so. 1 Kings chapter 22 verse 19 through 22. Wow! Praise Yahuwah! for allowing Mika Yahu to see into the spirit realm. The great prophet knew what was occurring and that Ahab was in serious trouble. Remember what occurs in the spirit realm will manifest into the physical. Another example we need to cover is when King David numbers the people. Remember it was evil for him to do this. Yahuwah, let's King David chose three different punishments. 
and Satan stood up against Israel, and moved David, to number Israel. And David said to Job, and to the rulers of the people, Go, number Israel from Beersheba to Dan, and bring the number of them to me so that I know it. And Job, answered Yahuwah, does that to his people a hundred times more than they are. But, my master the sovereign, are they not all my master's servants? Why does my master seek to do this? Why should he be a cause of guilt in Israel? But the sovereign's word prevailed against Joab. And Joab left and went throughout all Israel and came to Yerushalayim. And Joab gave the sum of the number of the people to David. And all Israel had one million, one hundred thousand, men who drew the sword. And Yahuda had four hundred, and seventy thousand men who drew the sword. But he did not number Louis and Binyamin among them, for the sovereign's word was loathsome to Joab. And it was evil in the eyes of Elohim, concerning this matter, and he smote Israel. Then David said to Elohim, I have sinned greatly, because I have done this matter. But now, I pray, take away the crookedness of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. And Yahuwah, spoke to Gad, David's seer, saying, Go, and you shall speak. To David, saying, Thus said Yahuwah, I hold three options before you. Choose one of them for yourself, and I do it to you. So Gad came to David and said to him, Thus said Yahuwah. Choose for yourself either three years of scarcity of food, or three months to be defeated by your foes, with the sword of your enemies, overtaking you. Or else for three days the sword of Yahuwah, even the plague in the land, with the messenger of Yahuwah, destroying throughout all the borders of Israel. And now consider, what answer I am to return to him who sent me. And David said to Gad, I am in great trouble. Please let me fall into the hand of Yahuwah, for his compassion is very great, but do not let me fall into the hand of man. And Yahuwah, sent a plague upon Yisrael, and seventy thousand men of Yisrael fell. And Elohim sent a messenger to Yerushalayim, to destroy it. And as he was destroying, Yahuwah, saw, and relented about the evil, and said to the messenger who was destroying, Enough! Now stop your hand! And the messenger of Yahuwah, was standing by the threshing floor of Ornan the Yibu site. And David lifted his eyes and saw the messenger of Yahuwah, standing between earth and the heavens, having in his hand a drawn sword stretched out over Yerushalayim. And David and the elders, wrapped in sackcloth, fell on their faces. And David said to Elohim, Was it not I who commanded the people to be numbered? I am the one who has sinned and done evil indeed. But these, the sheep, what have they done? Let your hand, I pray, O Yahuwah, my Elohim, be against me and my father's house, but not against your people, to be plagued. And the messenger of Yahuwah commanded God to say to David that David should go up to raise an altar to Yahuwah on the threshing floor of Ornan the Yebusite. So Dalwin went up at the word of Gad, which he had spoken in the name of Yahuwah. And Ornan turned and saw the messenger. And his four sons with him hid themselves, and Ornan was threshing wheat. And David came to Ornan, and Ornan looked and saw David, and he went out from the threshing floor, and bowed down to David with his face to the ground. And David said to Ornan, Give me the site of the threshing floor, so that I build an altar to Yahuwah on it. Give it to me at the complete price, so that the plague is restrained from the people. And Ornan said to David, Take it for yourself, and let my master the sovereign do what is good in his eyes. See, I shall give you the cattle for burnt offerings, the threshing implements for wood, and the wheat for the grain offering. I give it all. And Sovereign David said to Ornan, No, but I shall certainly buy it at the complete price, for I do not take what is yours for Yahuwah, nor offer a burnt offering without cost. And David gave Ornan six hundred shekels of gold by weight for the place. And David built there an altar to Yahuwah, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings, and called on Yahuwah. And he answered him from the heavens by fire on the altar of burnt offering. Then Yahuwah commanded the messenger, and he returned his sword to its sheath. At that time, when David saw that Yahuwah had answered him on the threshing floor of Ornan the Yebusite, he slaughtered there, 
for the dwelling place of Yahuwah, and the altar of the burnt offering, which Masha had made in the wilderness, were at that time at the high place in Jebon. But David was unable to go before it to inquire of Elohim, for he was afraid of the sword of the messenger of Yahuwah. Dash. 1 Chronicles chapter 21 verse 1 through 30. Wow! That is amazing! Here again, what was being done in the spiritual realm, was being manifested into the physical. King David, was able to see into the spiritual realm, and he saw the messenger of Yahuwah. Another example occurs, during the very first Passover. And I shall pass through the land of Mitzrayim on that night and shall smite all the firstborn in the land of Mitzrayim, both man and beast. And on all the mighty ones of Mitzrayim, I shall execute judgment, I am Yahuwah. And the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I shall pass over you, and let the plague not come on you to destroy you when I smite the land of Mitzrayim. Exodus chapter 12 verse 12 through 13. The death messenger went forth and killed all the firstborn. Even though there are no records stating that the death messenger was seen, the evidence is clear in that all the firstborn had died just as Yahuwah said. Turn with me to the great book of Ezekiel as we see another example. And he called out in my hearing, with a loud voice, saying, Let the punishers of the city draw near, each with his weapon of destruction in his hand. And look, six men came from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north, each with his battle axe in his hand. And one man, in their midst, was clothed with linen, and had a riders, in Kilrin, at his side. And they came in, and stood beside the bronze altar. And the esteem of the Elohim of Israel went up from the cherub, where it had been, to the threshold of the house. And he called, to the man clothed with linen, who had the riders in corn at his side, and Yahuwah said to him, Pass on into the midst of the city, into the midst of Yerushalayim, and you shall put a mark, on the foreheads, of the men who sigh, and cry over all the abominations, that are done within it. And to the others, he said in my hearing, pass on into the city, after him and smite, do not let your eye pardon nor spare. Slay to destruction, old, young men, maidens, and children, and women, but do not come near anyone, upon whom is the mark, and begin at my set apart place. So they began with the elders, who were in front of the house. And he said to them, Defile the house, and fill the courts with the slain. Go out. And they went out and smote in the city. And as they were smiting them, it came to be that I alone was left. And I fell on my face, and cried out, and said, O oh Master Yahuwah! Are you destroying all the remnant of Israel, in pouring out your wrath on your Ashalayim? And he said to me, the crookedness of the house of Israel and Yahudah is exceedingly great, and the land is filled with bloodshed, and the city filled with that which is warped. For they say, Yahuwah, has forsaken the land, and Yahuwah is not seen. But as for me, my eyes shall not pardon, nor would I spare, I shall recompense their deed on their own head. And see, the man clothed with linen, who had the inkhorn at his side, reported back and said, I have done as you commanded me. Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 1 through 11. Another example where Yahuwah removed the veil into the spiritual realm is right before Stephen gets stoned for speaking the name of Yahuwah. And hearing this they were cut to the hearts, and gnashed the teeth at him. But he, being filled with the set apart spirit, looked steadily into the heaven and saw the esteem of Elohim, and Yahushua, standing at the right hand of Elohim, and he said, Look! I see the heavens opened, and the son of Adam, standing at the right hand of Elohim. And crying out with a loud voice, they stopped their ears, and rushed upon him with one mind, and threw him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments, at the feet of a young man named, Shal. And they were stoning Stephen, as he was calling and saying, Master, Yahushua, receive my spirit. And kneeling down, 
he cried out with a loud voice, Master, do not hold this sin against them. And having said this, he fell asleep. Acts chapter 7 verse 54 through 60. What a wonderful testimony to our faith. Stephen was the first martyr. Yahuwah allowed his eyes to see into the spiritual realm, right before he got stoned. That should encourage all believers to hold fast until the end. Many years ago, Yahuwah showed me in a night vision, the fate of quite a lot of called out ones. I'll never forget the vision, as Yahuwah showed me many matters that end time believers would face. One part of the vision stood out for me that reminds me of the stoning of Stephen. I was standing in the beheading line. Not a single word was spoken. As the line moved forward, each person looked at the person in front of them, then turned and looked at the person behind them. All those who had been beheaded patiently waited in the audience. These precious ones of Yahuwah were waiting for the rest of those to be martyred. As each person went up on the stage to get beheaded, they looked out seeing all those who had just been martyred before them. No sooner than they were taking their last breath here, they were instantly transformed into the spiritual realm to live in eternity. Yahuwah is so merciful that he allowed these precious ones to be able to. Unlike us, Yahushua was without sin, so guess what that means? He could see into the spiritual realm. Comprehending this, each of us should have a deeper passion into becoming more like him. We should also desire to want to do the ministry work he has blessed each of us with to the fullest. Let us review some examples of how Yahushua could see into the spirit realm. A great example is when Yahushua was immersed. But Yahushua, answering, said to him, Permit it now, for this it is fitting, for us to fill all righteousness. Then he permitted him. And having been immersed, Yahushua, went up immediately, from the water, and see, the heavens were opened, and he saw the spirit of Elohim, descending like a dove, and coming upon him, and see, a voice out of the heavens, saying, This is my son, the beloved, in whom I did delight. Matthew chapter 3 verse 15 through 17. This is fascinating. The heavens opening, brothers and sisters. Amazing. In that here, the veil that covering was being pulled back. Yahuwah removed it. Scriptures describes the Ruach HaKodesh descending but to the right as they described it as a dove. This was not a dove, but was the spirit of Yahuwah coming through the veil that is the covering. Yahuwah's spirit was seen coming through the spiritual realm into the physical. Oh praise Yahuwah! Do you comprehend this? Even the sound barrier was broken through as the very voice of Yahuwah was even heard. Praise him with me brothers and sisters. Fascinating. Oh but there is more. See Yahushua did not need to respond or even react to people because of what they said or even by their actions but because of what he beheld in the spiritual realm. That is why he was able to see Nathaniel. Nathaniel said to him, From where do you know me? Yahushua answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. John chapter 1 verse 48. Hurry come with me. To the transformation of Yahushua. Let us review this magnificent event. When the veil, that is the covering was removed, and they saw the esteem of Yahushua. And after six days, Yahushua took Kepha, and Jacob, and Johan and his brother, and brought them up on a high mountain, by themselves, and he was transformed before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his garments became as white as the light. And see, Moshe and Eliyahu appeared to them 
talking with him. And Kepha, answering, said to Yahushua, Master, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here, three booths, one for you, one for Moshe, and one for Eliyahu. While he was still speaking, see, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And see, a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my son, the beloved, in whom I did delight. Hear him. And when the taught ones heard, they fell on their faces and were much afraid. But Yahushua came near, Aaron touched them and said, Rise, and do not be afraid. And having lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Yahushua only. Matthew chapter 17 verse 1 through 8 Brothers and sisters, hallelujah! Praise Yahuwah! How fascinating! Here again the veil, the covering, was removed. Thus, Kefir and Jacob were able to see into the spiritual realm. They also heard Yahuwah speak. This reminds me of when Yahuwah opened the veil and spoke the marriage vows that is the Ten Commandments as outlined in the great book of Exodus. Chapter 20, To the People. Remember how terrified they were. Clearly, Yahushua was able to see into the spirit realm. Therefore, he knew how great Yahuwah's army was. That is why, he stated his father could send more than twelve legions of messengers to Yahushua's aid, if he asked, it. Or do you think that I am not able to pray to my father now, and he shall provide me with more than twelve legions of messengers? Matthew, chapter 26, verse 53. For all we know, all the Kodesh messengers, could have been right there, patiently waiting for Yahuwah, to give the command to destroy mankind. I have only shared, a few examples of when the veil, that is the covering had been removed, and thus the spiritual realm revealed. Let us review the examples that have been shared. Second Kings chapter 6 verse 11 through 17. Daniel chapter 10 verse 2 through 14. Genesis chapter 28, verse 10 through 17. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 through 2. Numbers chapter 22, verse 20 through 35. 1 Kings 22 verse 19 through 22. 1 Chronicles 21 verse 1 through 30. Acts chapter 7 verse 54 through 60. Matthew chapter 3 verse 15 through 17. Matthew chapter 17 verse 1 through 8. There is just one more that needs to be known. When Yahushua ascended back to heaven. This is extremely important. So much so. All readers must comprehend this. My prayer is that I can correctly execute this message to everyone. As previously mentioned, Satan will duplicate scriptural end-time events just to deceive the masses. My agenda is that you, your loved ones, and others will not be duped into falling for the strong delusion. As outlined in 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 11. Now pay attention, see to the taught ones looking with their physical eyes. To them, they saw Yahushua ascending back into heaven. Then a cloud hid Yahushua from their sight. However, what really occurred is that the veil, the is the covering had been opened, pulled back if you will. And Yahushua went back into the spiritual realm with the Father. And having said this, while they were looking on, he was taken up, and a cloud hid him from their sight. And as they were gazing into the heaven as he went up, see, two men stood by them, dressed in white, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up into the heaven? This same Yahushua, 
who was taken up from you into the heaven shall come in the same way as you saw him go into the heaven Acts chapter 1 verse 9 through 11 the reason why this is so important is because Satan is going to accomplish duplicating the following verse sadly it will deceive the entire world if it were possible even the elect as outlined in Matthew chapter 24 verse 24 that being knows that Yahushua will return the same way he left and I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he doth judge and make war his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written, that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Hallelujah! Praise Yahuwah! Did you feel the Ruach HaKodesh? Wow! That was powerful! That is also our blessed hope! That is not exactly how it will play out, however those who did that animation, did an excellent job. Let us turn to the great book of Revelation to get the deeper meaning. See! He is coming! With the clouds! And every eye shall I'll see him, even they, who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth shall mourn because of him. Yes, Amen. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Are you ready? Are you really ready, brothers and sisters? Listen up. At the seventh trump, when Yahushua returns, the veil, that covering, the first Shamem, that is the sky, will be rolled back. It will literally be opened. The veil, separating the spiritual from the physical, will vanish. The two realms will instantly become one. The entire world will be able to see the spiritual realm. That is why every I will see Yahushua. Brothers and sisters get excited. Jump for joy. Give a shout of praise. Out to Yahuwah. Up for without a doubt. His word is true. Scriptures describe this fascinating and most anticipated event of all time as follows. And heaven departed like a scroll being rolled up and every mountain and island was moved out of its place.
Revelation chapter 6 verse 14. And he bowed, the heavens and came down. And thick darkness was under his feet. Psalm chapter 18 verse 9. And all the host of the heavens shall rot away. And the heavens shall be rolled up like a scroll, and all their host fade like a leaf fading on the vine, and like the fading one of a fig tree. Isaiah chapter 34 verse 4. But the day of Yahuwah, shall come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with intense heat, and the earth and the works that are in it shall be burned up. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 10. Because the Master himself, shall come down from heaven with a shout, with the voice of a chief messenger, and with the trumpet of Elohim, and the dead in Messiah shall rise first. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16. When the seventh trumpet sounds, the most magnificent event, throughout all of history, will occur. At that very moment, the trumpets will blast, echoing throughout planet Earth. Lightning strikes will flash throughout the sky. Thunder will roar, while the Earth beneath rumbles, cause everything that shakes will be shaken. The heavens will be open and will literally be torn apart as the veil, that is the covering, shall be pulled back. The sun, the stars along with the entire host of heaven will fade that is with air away. As nothing can compare to the majestic beauty of our bridegroom Yahushua, our sovereign, our king, our bridegroom, in all his splendor and with great esteem, Yahushua will return for us. Everyone has been appointed to kneel to his great name, either in, in admiration or in shame, Yahushua had this to say, about this awesome event. And there shall be signs in the sun, and moon, and stars, and on the earth. Anxiety of nations, in bewilderment at the roaring of the sea, and agitation. Men fainting from fear, and the expectation of what is coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then they shall see the son of Adam, coming in a cloud with power and much esteem. And when these matters begin to take place, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Luke chapter 21 verse 25 through 28 Praise Yahuwah! Isn't this fascinating brothers and sisters? Yahushua will appear along with the Kodesh messengers, and all those who are with him. The reason why everyone will see the spiritual realm, is because in that instant, we all shall be changed. See, I speak a secret to you. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible has to put on incorruption, and this mortal to put on immortality. And when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall come to be the word that has been written. Death is swallowed up in overcoming. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your overcoming? 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 51 through 55. This is our blessed hope. All scriptural believing people have patiently been waiting for this miraculous event for thousands of years. As eager as we all are though, we cannot let our guard down. See, now that we have reviewed the scriptures, that pertain to the heavens, being opened. That is, the physical realm being pulled back, so that their spiritual realm can be seen, through the power and spoken word of Yahuwah. Now it really gets interesting, brothers and sisters. Right about now. I need each of you to pay special attention. As it's getting down to the nitty gritty, in that we are about to expose the main prop that is needed and will be used in pulling off the greatest show on earth. The entire event that surrounds the return of Yahushua, Messiah, the great counterfeiter, aka Satan, 
will duplicate in order to deceive their entire world, that it is Yahushua, coming in the clouds. Let me repeat that. The entire event, that surrounds the return of Yahushua, Messiah. The great counterfeiter, A, K, A, Satan, will duplicate in order to deceive their entire world, that it is Yahushua, coming in the clouds. CERN which was created, by the world's top scientists, engineers and physicists for the sole purpose of breaking through to the other side. CERN has broken the physical realm wide open. When the time comes, the pits of hell will be unleashed upon our physical realm. By doing this, Satan along with the demons, will come through the veil that divides the physical realm from the spiritual realm. Satan has rulership over the realm of the atmosphere, which is invisible. However, the technology of CERN, will cause the entire sky to become one gigantic portal, in which, the two, yet very single worlds, will collide. To further explain this please read Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2. John chapter 12 verse 31. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. 1 John chapter 5 verse 19. Matthew chapter 4 verse 8 through 9. Luke chapter 4 verse 6. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. Satan has dominion over the earth, and... That is why when the great prophet Daniel, started to pray, and humble... himself, the messenger of Yahuwah, who is before the throne went forth. However, the messenger of Yahuwah, was hindered because the ruler of Persia fought with him, and Michael for 21 days. Please read Daniel chapter 10 for more information. That battle, took place in the atmosphere, that is invisible to us. Here let me explain, between the earth and the third heaven, where Yahuwah's throne is, there is an ocean of demons. As of now, a person can only tap into that realm through occult practices. However, once CERN is fully powered up, and the pit of hell has been unleashed, everyone, believer and non-believer alike, will be able to see Satan and its demons. As the sixth trumpet sounds, Satan and its fallen crew, will masquerade as messengers of light. Do not be deceived. Called out ones, must stand fast to sound doctrine. Scriptures clearly state, that Yahushua, will not return until, the great apostasy, that is the falling away, and, the man of sin be revealed. Then Yahushua returns, at the seventh trump, not the sixth trump. Lucifer, also known as the Shining One, the Sovereign of Babel, is to be revealed first. Satan is the father of lies, as explained in John, chapter 8, verse 44. Satan is a deceiver, as Revelation, chapter 12, verse 9 states. And disguises, itself as a messenger of light, as 2 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 14 declares. Whoever, does not have discernment, for this time frame, will be deceived. Yahuwah, does nothing unless first revealing it to his servants. To verify this see Amos, chapter 3, verse 7. So he has revealed these matter to us. Let us praise him for that. Satan on the other hand, is going to duplicate all prophetic events, with the help of CERN. Remember Satan will be cast down and stuck here in the physical world when this time comes. It will need to create an alternative kingdom, here to deceive the world. CERN openly tells us their agenda, by proudly displaying the dancing Shiva at their location. The two million dollar statue, was unveiled in 2004. What we should find interesting is that Shiva, a Hindi deity, is thought to be the supreme being, out of a trinity, of Brahma and Vishnu, who creates and 
transforms the universe. Shiva, is thought to be there, chief of the all the gods, and lord of the universe. Shiva, is also considered to be the great yogi, that can transcend reality. Isn't that interesting? This Hindi deity, is also thought to be the teacher of yoga, among many other beliefs. What we should find even more interesting, and that needs to be noted, is that Shiva, is also considered, the destroyer of evil. In the Trimurti, the Hindi trinity, it is believed, that the dancing Shiva, will do a type of dance called, Dandava. This dance will be done, when the time comes for the world to be, destroyed. Are you not surprised? How much more, up in your face, concern be? Right here, they are telling us, that their goal is to bring their, God of destruction into our realm. I am thus reminded, and they have over them a sovereign, the messenger of the pit of the deep, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollon. Revelation chapter 9 verse 11. The ruler of the abyss is also referred as Abaddon in Hebrew and Apollyon in Greek, both meaning destroyer or destruction, brothers and sisters. It doesn't get any clearer than that. But just to let it be noted here, CERN logo is 666. CERN has the top people, from all around the world, working together, with the dancing Shiva and the logo of 666. Well, it really doesn't get any clearer than that. All this is right with what the FOY ministry has previously stated. Satan, the imposter, shows up at sixth seal sixth bowl and the sixth trumpet. Brothers and sisters, their goal is to remove the veil, and bring the destroyer into our physical realm. This is the God, these people serve. They have given their allegiance, to Satan. They want to usher in the new world order. They want their utopia here on earth, with Satan as their king. They are working endlessly, to bring about the strong delusion, I beseech you, do not be deceived. Are you starting to see how this plays out beloved dead ones? If you need more evidence here check out this article, this article, back in 2016. From Wall Street Pretty. Much states what CERN's true intentions are. Seeking secrets of the universe or to open up the portals of hell. They are stating what their intentions are. These people are pure evil. The Illuminati and Satanic Scientists. At CERN even preformed a mock human sacrifice. There is however evidence. That points to this being a real sacrifice. The creepy ritual. Took place in front of the giant Shiva. Statue at the CERN headquarters in Geneva, Switzerland. The video shows men wearing black robes that appear to stab a naked woman. News reports claims this is just a prank. However, other believe this was an actual human sacrifice. Regardless if this is real or fake, it is still demonic and evil. Despite all the talks, that this was not a real human sacrifice, this video states how one of the scientists showed up missing one week before the mock ritual. Then sadly, this young woman showed up dead three weeks later. For this purpose, I cut the video out of respect if this was indeed a real human sacrifice. 20-year-old Danish student Olivia Ostergaard went missing March 26th. 2013, in Zurich. She was found dead three weeks later from undisclosed causes, the police said that it was suicide. I'm sure that you have all seen the supposed mock sacrifice at CERN video a few months back, a group of black hooded people that stabs a blonde haired girl captured on film, supposedly all just a childish prank says CERN and the media. But what if it's not a prank? 
I figured that I could at least look through the missing people archives from Zurich and I found this young girl that fit the bill. Her name was Olivia Sturgeward. What struck me was that she was last seen wearing a black coat with a hood, just like the girl in the CERN sacrifice video. Zurich, Switzerland, police in Canton Sag Wednesday April 3rd began air searches for missing Danish student Olivia Ostergaard, age 20, who disappeared without a trace one week prior. The police missing persons bulletin has now been shared European wide. Sag police in a bulletin Saturday 30 March described her as, 178 centimeters tall, of slim build, with long blonde hair. She is believed to be wearing a black coat with a hood and a dark dress. She has three tattoos, one each on the forearms and on the right thumb. Secondly, but not as significant, she has three tattoos, a triangle and a pagan symbol that perhaps might indicate that she was part of some kind of pagan cult. That poor girl what? and her family. These people are so far out there. They are totally demonic. Wanting to bring, the destroyer aka Satan. Into this physical world. Check out this strange. Weird, evil. And very disturbing video of the opening. Satanic ritual, of the largest tunnel in the world. The Gothard base tunnel. Is very close to CERN. World leaders. From all over the world attended. This opening ceremony. AKA satanic ritual. This is the most bizarre thing I have ever seen. The entire rituals continues to get more disturbing as it goes on. From the start of this so-called ceremony they have called on a demonic wing. Angel. I muted the music and the singing but here this man is summoning up their goat god which is Satan. Now it starts really getting strange. As we see the start gate fired up and. They thus bring forth three demons. Next we comes group mock human sacrifices. As the one girl spins, the goat god overcomes her with. The goat god aka Satan has been summoned into this world and appears on. Stage. Three unclean spirits is shown as well as the third eye. The Right here see the girl spinning in circles? Satan overtakes her. Mock human sacrifice. Here is the three unclean spirits.
the third eye. This is who these people worship, who they serve. This is their god, Baphomet. Also known as Satan, the destroyer. During part of the ritual, a woman gets impregnated. And here, she gives birth. There is no doubt in my mind, that this was indeed a satanic ritual bragging. About how they are going to be using CERN to break on through to the other side. In pulling off the greatest show on earth by breaking through to the other side. CERN can cross over. From one dimension to the other. Scriptures clearly warn us. Neither give place to the devil. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27. Ponder. On the deeper. Meaning here beloved ones. Not only should we not open the door, letting Satan come into our place. Furthermore. We should not open any portal. Wormhole. Or any other method. To allow the devil into this atmosphere. Which is humanity's dwelling place. The veil has indeed been broken. And that is why we see strange matters. Brothers and sisters, demons are being released through the portals of CERN. Check this video out. A lot of people are thinking this is Jesus Christ. Let us not forget that the devil walks the earth to and from as stated in Job chapter 1 verse 7 and 1st. Peter chapter 5 verse 8. The prince of the air as stated in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2. Masquerades as an angel of light as described in 2nd Corinthians chapter 11 verse 14. Satan is also the father of lies as we are told in John chapter 8 verse. Regardless. If this is blue beam. A hologram. Or even an open portal. Satan loves to put on a show. Deception is coming. 
We are in the end times. Yahushua has warned. And Yahushua began to say to them, Take heed, that no one leads you astray. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am he, and they shall lead many astray. Mark chapter 13 verse 5 through 6 And if anyone then says to you, Look, here is the Messiah. Or, look, there. Do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets shall rise and show signs and wonders to lead astray, if possible, even the chosen ones. And you, take heed. See, I have forewarned you of it all. Mark chapter 13 verse 21 through 23. Clearly, there is enough evidence to prove that the spiritual realm is right here with us. Through the fall of man, Yahuwah veiled the spiritual realm for our own good. When the seventh trumpet sounds, Yahushua will return. At this miraculous event, every eye will see, because the barrier will be removed, as mentioned previously, in order for the greatest show on earth to be accomplished. That veil of the two yet different parts of a single world will have to be broken through. Wicked people will accomplish this will the help of CERN. Those who are on Satan's team, they will accomplish. Duplicating Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, along with many other prophetic events, to deceive the entire world into believing that this is Yahushua, Messiah. Sadly, the entire world has been brainwashed and conditioned to fall for the strong delusion. See, to the majority the Antichrist will stand in the temple, claiming to be the Messiah. No. This is where they greatly error. Because that guy is the fall guy. That entire scene is the smoke screen that comes before the greater deception. Everyone, except the elect, will fall for the next scene. Satan coming in place of Yahushua. Please comprehend this. Satan will come after the fall guy stands in the temple claiming to be Antichrist. Because the world will be expecting Yahushua to come next. But instead the veil will be broken and Satan and the demons will come through into our realm. Remember Antichrist means in place of. Here let me explain a little more. man says. The Antichrist will be a man with the spirit of Satan. However, Yahushua said. The Antichrist will be Satan himself coming in disguise as Messiah, Yahushua.
claiming to be Yahushua, Messiah deceiving the entire world except Yahuwah's elect Revelation chapter 13 verse 11 Let us review the rider of the white horse in the great book of Revelation And I looked and saw a white horse and he who sat on it holding a bow and a crown was given to him and he went out overcoming and to overcome Revelation chapter 6 verse 2 Now let's break this down Strong's exhaustive concordance a bow, number G5115. Is dox on from the base of G5088. A bow. Apparently is the simplest fabric. Bow. Wow dot beloved ones. I have never heard. Of a bow being. Referred to as fabric. Typically. There has been three types. One to shoot with. As with a bow and arrow to bow down and then the rainbow yet now we see that bow here is being used a simplest fabric i might add it is only used this one time throughout the entire scriptures so what we got here is a cheap imitation that is exactly what satan will be an imitation he is not the real deal but the great counterfeit, the great wannabe, the great has been. What is even more interesting about the rider of the white horse is the banner or bow that Satan will be holding. Could very well be LGBT. Rainbow flag. Satan is a tranny and the master at confusion. We know Baphomet has both genders. Do not be deceived, brothers and sisters. Clearly, we are living in fascinating times. The greatest show on earth is about to be played out. Many have longed to see this performance. Yet, we were created for a time such as this. How exciting to have front row tickets. Comprehend this beloved ones. Then praise Yahuwah. For he is good. If you're not right with him, then get right. If you need to make your wrongs right, then make them right. This is a real battle between good and evil. No fence sitters. No hopping between two opinions. Pick what side you want to be on. Then go with it. Let the mockers mock. While we praise. The chauffeur. Is calling. For all workers. To get to the vineyard now. No time for slumber. No sideliners. No bench sitters. No time to waste. All yahuas. Workers are needed. For the hour. Is great. Do not. Be swept away. With the coming. Great deception. It will be profane. The devil. Will manifest. Great signs and wonders. Deceptive miracles. Unbelievable deceit. All to lure. The masses. Into believing. The strong delusion. Let me end with this. Do not let any of this. Shake your faith. Top scientists. From around the world. Have joined forces. To bring the destroyer. Into the physical world. As in times of old. When all the nations. Got together. And build a tower. To try to reach into heavens. 
this time round. They did not need to build a tall tower. They built so, just as in times of old as of now, nothing will be restrained from them.